All right, and just like that, it is eight in the morning, Monday, getting ready to head off for this property inspection. And it's not that it's in the worst area of town, but it's not in a great area. All right, and just like that, I am off. About a 55 minute drive, not too bad. Man, my Bluetooth is not even connected here yet. It's very bright out this morning, but I gotta stop and uh, fill up the tires. Two of these tires are low. I haven't driven this car in quite a while. It's just been sitting, so yeah, get that done and get on the road. And there's the inspector, and here we are. This is the house, totally vacant, and there's the 13 unit. So this home here is a four bed, two bath, but there's no walls, it's vacant. They've been using it as storage. So this is kind of a wild card for me, but I'd, all, I'd run all the numbers with uh, the lender as well. And just for my own underwriting without this factored in. So even if this house, let's say it's a complete dud, it's just gonna sit empty, use this storage, we scrape it, whatever. The numbers still work perfectly. So if this is solid, yeah, it's probably gonna take in my mind 30, 40,000 minimum to renovate it. But if it can get an extra 1,300 a month in rent, what it's adding to the NOI is a lot more than that in value. So um, really curious to see how the single family part of it plays out. So I'll do a summary at the end, but I just wanted to give you a breakdown of what's going on. This house, I am not gonna touch it. After the inspection report, and I'm filming this like two weeks later, um, it's gonna cost a lot of money and take way too much time to finish this. As you can see, it's completely bare bone. The two quotes came in right around $150,000 to get this back into working condition and only add about 180 in value. So just not worth the time, it's gonna sit empty. So here's a few pictures of the property. It's in <laughs> not the best condition. It has a coin-operated laundry, which is great. The units are a lot smaller than I thought. This guy was trying to pass off some arguable studios as one bedrooms. It's a mix of studio and one bedrooms. They're very small, two to 300 square feet small. Very, very small. But some of them are in good condition. Um, really, really cheap in terms of renovation. There's not much we're gonna have to do. Mostly kitchen and then fixing a lot of stuff that is not up to compliance or code. It is not safe. There's not proper ventilation above the stovetops in a bunch of the units. The GFCI outlets are not working in pretty much all the units. There's a lot of issues like that, but overall it looks like a good opportunity. Single meter, so that's something we'll probably uh, work with is a little rubs program to build back some of these utilities. Bump up the NOI. Here's kind of the central hallway. All right, and just like that, the walkthrough is done. Nothing too crazy so far. We'll see what the inspection report spits out, but Scott, the guy who does all the inspections for everything of mine, says really nothing too crazy. And honestly, for 1950s construction, it looks pretty good. Obviously, the house here is the wild card, but numbers work nonetheless with just the primary 13 units. So good plan. Had a property management walk in this as well, just to give them a good sense of what the project is in terms of renovation. They're on board. Everything seems good to go. So unless there's any crazy thing that seems to pop up now after I leave, which is very unlikely. Whoa! Of course there's something that popped up. Why wouldn't I expect that? Stay till the end of the video. Um, the deal will close. So everything looks fine. Um, you know, get some repair requests and stuff. Uh, probably knock off some concessions at closing, which is always great. It takes a little bit less money out of pocket than to close the deal. Okay, so I just wanted to get right to it and break this down. As of when I'm filming this, it is January 10th. We're about two weeks after the inspection. Our close date is January 31st, which is the end of the month. Still got three weeks left. Now, let me explain what was going on. I was going through standard financing. It was not hard money. I was not purchasing cash. And I also wasn't using institutional financing. It was a national bank through a broker. It was normal financing. And you have what's normally a 30-day financing contingency where you're typically 1% deposit in this situation, $7,000 of mine as an earnest deposit. You can still get that back if you can't get financing within 30 days. Now, I don't want to back out of this deal for any reason unless something really crazy happened. Even if financing backed out, I'll pay cash or get hard money if I have to just to bridge the gap until I can get normal financing if it's a long-term hold. So this property that I'm purchasing for $700,000, guess what happened? I found out uh, the lender, by the way, who I've not worked with before, decides to back out just after my financing contingency due to population issues, because I get it, it's a small town and they just don't lend there. They weren't comfortable with it. And while that's fine, it didn't need to take you a month to figure that out. So that was a little frustrating. And the, the problem isn't that I didn't get to work with that lender on that deal. I'm sure we'll do something in the future. The problem is how long that took and it put me in a pinch where now I don't have the time anymore to get another standard financing. So that leaves me going the hard money option, which just to bridge that gap, I will do. Now, one of the things I found out, which is the huge red flag, as I had kind of teased in there, wait till the end, the property is not zoned for residential. 
And here's what that means. When I was doing even further underwriting and speaking with a lender, one of the lenders pointed out, hey, by the way, we noticed this property is, is not zoned for, for residential. It's not permitted for that. What's, what's going on here? And I was immediately like, what? <laughs> Looking on my computer, right? Like going real fast, just and pull up all the county records, send it to them. Like, no, it's not just through the county, it's through the city. And I was trying to break this down. I talked to a real estate attorney. What ended up happening? Got a city official who was through the city, not the county. The city has a lot of those very specific rules. And they said, oh, yeah, that's correct. It's it's zoned like N3, which is neighborhood commercial. Whatever it was, it was zoned neighborhood commercial. I was like, what does that mean? It's a commercial space. That's what you're telling me. They said it's not zoned for residential. However, it's grandfathered in. And this is what's known as a legally non-conforming unit. So it's a non-conforming unit that you can legally rent out. So everything's fine, but here's what that means. That means institutions, national banks, and regional banks typically will never, I know the institutionals won't, with legally non-conforming, they will not lend on the property. So that leaves you to have to go to a very creative financing route of some kind or hard money or cash. So what I then learned from uh, even further digging, it now made sense why the current owner purchased it in cash. I know he paid about 340,000 in cash some years back. So what the problem is here and the slight thing I'm trying to figure out in the next five days or so by the end of this week, it's Monday right now, is am I able to get my earnest deposit back if I walk away due to a non-disclosure? So you have to disclose information on a property when you're selling. For an example, if it's an older property, you have a lead-based paint disclosure. Do you know of any lead-based paint in the property? Because that can be a liability. So the seller has to fill out all this information and I got absolutely no information about this property not being zoned correctly. And so as we go to them and ask, we're waiting for a reply, if he tries to say no, and I'm posting this video later on purpose so I wait to get his reply because we can kind of trap him in his own words here. Uh, if he says no, the thing is, the city official told us that the current owner and gave us his name had tried and failed to get the property rezoned. So that right there would break the disclosure agreement, which is a huge, huge legal no-no. There's a lot of things I could go after there on that regard. However, that would just give me grounds to get my earnest back if I decided to walk away. Now, for me, I don't want to walk away from a good deal. So my plan still is to attempt to close. It really just depends on what the hard money terms are going to be. I don't want to come out of pocket in cash because I'm trying to line up two other separate deals. I also have the six unit being funded. I have another out of state deal being funded that's not that much money, but still, there's a lot of things going on and that's my first jump into commercial. So now there's different legal fees. I'm setting up entities. I've set up nine different LLCs as well as a trust over the last two months. So I just wanna make sure I have more than enough floating capital just in the real estate accounts to make sure that everything's fine. And on top of that, since I'm not doing on the other six unit like I had discussed or on this 14 unit, since there's not normal financing in place, I cannot finance renovations through what's called a bridge loan. So that means now I'm going to be out of pocket on the renovations, which on this one is going to be, uh, this is talking about the 14 unit, this is going to be $40,000. That is excluding the house. Again, leaving that alone. That inspection report was horrendous. There is so many things with that house. And uh, ultimately, I would like to parcel it off and get rid of it, but I can't because it shares a water meter. So there's some issues there I might have to work through. But the goal of the property would be to get it. The only real red flag and the potential issue is the fact that you greatly limit your buyer pool when it's not zoned correctly. So whoever goes to buy the property from me now has to purchase it in cash or with hard money or some other thing that I might not be aware of because they can't do a standard financing deal. And that just cuts your buyer pool probably by a minimum of 75%. And I just wanted to also add on top of that, you add that onto the factor that it's in a secondary market, it's not in a main area. If this is in the typical location I buy in, no problem because there's people doing cash offers, hard money deals all day long every day. In a secondary market, not so much. So you're just like double reducing who your buyer pool is and that just might make me a little uncomfortable. That makes a lot of people who do hard money loans more skeptical, which just means that you have to put more money down. So it really, it just depends. Right now what we're looking at is they want to fund about 65% on half decent terms. So that would mean I'm coming out of pocket 35%, which I have the cash sitting, that's just my situation. But now you have to analyze, does the deal make the most sense? I was expecting to put 25 down, 30 at the absolute tops, and be able to finance renovations. So now you're looking at about an extra $100,000 roughly that I'm gonna have to come out of pocket, including the renovations. So all these numbers, just 
just have to be factored in. It's just part of the calculation game. So I'm really seeing what happens with the zoning, trying to get some more documents from that city official who's been so gracious as to help us out, as well as talking to the seller about what's going on and if they had any idea of what was the issue there with the zoning. So we'll see just a hiccup on the road. It's something that I haven't faced before. I do still hope to close on this deal. I will definitely update you uh, with what happens. I mean, either I'm going to walk away and lose seven grand, which isn't that big of a deal. I'd rather lose 7,000 than get into a bad deal that might be a mess, especially here's the thing, especially if you're using hard money, that's where a lot of people get pinched and not able to get out of a property and you have a loan on it like that, where it's hard money, it's expensive, there's terms, there's time constrictions. So there's a lot of things like that that you have to factor in. So this is just a new thing for me. I'm excited for this deal, excited to try to close it up in any way I can. And as long as it makes sense, I will proceed forward with it because I can get the financing for it. I can do it. The deal's there and lined up. It's just, does it make the most sense? Not does it make sense? Does it make the most sense or do I walk away and go find a different deal? Because there's always another deal, right? Don't want to get into a bad one. So that's what's going on. If you enjoyed this update as well as this walkthrough, it took some time to put together, I'd greatly appreciate it if you smashed the like button and considered subscribing to the channel. We got like 256, 260,000 or whatever it is of you amazing, beautiful people. I appreciate you following along on the journey from starting the first ever e-commerce store to then starting a document on YouTube and doing all these crazy things, moving 10 different times, starting different businesses, documenting failures that cost me way too much money and all these little things as well. It's just been phenomenal. So I appreciate that. If you have any questions or want to know anything about this property or other stuff that I'm doing in specific, leave it in the comment section down below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.